welcome to the Installing LTSP on Edubuntu 10.04 video. In this tutorial, we install LTSP standalone packages on a pre-existing Edubuntu installation using 32-bit hardware. If you haven't installed LTSP yet, please view our Installing Edubuntu 10.04 video, which can be accessed by navigating to youtube.com forward slash diskless workstations. Log in with the first account created when you installed Edubuntu. If you're following along from our previous Edubuntu installation video, you'll remember our test account. Once logged in, open up a terminal window by navigating to Applications, and open a terminal window by clicking Terminal. The first thing we need to do is log in our user as root. This allows the user to perform administrative functions. We can log into root by using our primary account and typing sudo bash. Root can be accessed by any account you designate as administrator via the sudo bash command. Now type your user's account password. Next we're going to update the server with the aptitude command. Notice that the double ampersand is being used, which is the equivalent of entering two commands consecutively. The first command, aptitude update, is used to update package information from the Ubuntu repositories. The second command, aptitude full-upgrade-y, will perform an upgrade of Ubuntu, importing the new packages found in the aptitude update command. The dash Y option is used to automatically answer yes if the installer was to prompt for any questions. During the upgrade process, you'll be presented with a question about configuring Grub. Grub has been installed on the server already, so there's no need to reinstall it. Unless you are working with a special environment, select Yes. Selecting No will halt your update. Once the update has been completed, you should reboot your server in order to allow the changes to take effect. Next, log back in to the server after reboot and open another terminal window from the application menu. Be sure to sudo bash again to log in as root, just like we did before updating. Now we're going to install the LTSP server standalone package with aptitude. This package contains all the required system components to get LTSP up and running properly. Don't worry about any fail messages that you see during installation. The package is attempting to start the DHCP server with its default settings, and we've not yet fully configured the server, so it will not start properly. After the LTSP packages have finished installing, we're going to make some changes to the existing network interfaces. Open slash Etsy slash network slash interfaces with your favorite editor. For simplicity, we're going to be using Pico. The interfaces file has some very specific nomenclature, so you'll want to pay attention to what is being put in. 
and ensure that you don't have any spelling errors. In this tutorial, we use a server with two network interface cards. This tutorial does not cover setting up LTSP with a single network interface. When you first open your interfaces file, the only entry in there will be for the LO interface, also known as loopback. This entry allows the server to reference itself for various network functions. We are going to leave this interface and create two new interfaces below it. First we are going to work with the ETH0 interface. On our server, the ETH0 interface is attached to our internal network and is assigned its IP address via DHCP. Next we're going to create the ETH1 interface. This interface will be used by the LTSP thin clients. ETH1 will be a static IP address, so we will assign it an IP address in the next line. The address line will be used to tell the interface what its IP address will be. For the purposes of creating this video, this address has been chosen arbitrarily in order to ensure that it does not interfere with our internal network. This is an important aspect of your network, so you'll want to put some thought into what IP address you choose for your server. We recommend that you do not choose an IP address on the same subnet that your current network is operating on. The netmask line is where you will enter your subnet. We are going to operate with a 255.255.255.0 netmask which allows our server to assign 253 addresses to thin clients booting on the network. Next, save the file and exit. In Pico, hit Ctrl and X. Now we are going to edit our DHCP configuration file, which is located at etsy ltsp dhcpd.conf. The dhcpd.conf file is used to tell the server how it will assign IP addresses through the DHCP server, as well as which interface will be used for the DHCP server. You can also use the range to tell the server what IP addresses can be assigned to the clients logging onto your server. We are going to keep all settings as default and only change the third octet of our IP addresses to reflect the IP subnet of our ETH1 interface. Of course, this file will be changed based on what address you assign to your ETH1 interface, so be sure that what you enter reflects the IP address that was used in the interface's file. Once you have made the requisite changes, save and exit. After the dhcpd.conf file is saved, we're going to create our LTSP client image. You can do that by typing ltsp-build-client space dash dash arch i386. The dash dash arch option indicates to the server what processor architecture you're running on the clients. We are running a 32-bit client, so you're going to build the client with i386. This build process requires an internet connection and will take between 20 and 45 minutes to complete. Please be patient.
Once the build process has been completed, you'll want to reboot your server again. Once the server boots, your LTSP installation is complete. Plug a client into the network, extending from your ETH1 interface, power it on, and it will boot automatically. We are going to log in with the test account we have already created to ensure that the LTSP server is operating properly. Congratulations, your LTSP server is running.